Hi, I'm Dave Parry, the DT Advisor at Cleeps. Welcome to our Toolbox Talk video on how to use a laser cutter safely. Laser cutters are powerful and versatile machines used in manufacturing and are very common in DT departments in secondary schools. In this video, I will go through some of the steps to ensure that you can operate the laser cutter safely. So let's get started. Preparation. Before using the laser cutter, make sure the work area is clean and free from any clutter. Also, make sure that you have read the user manual and familiarize yourself with the machine's operation. The machines are usually quite large, but you should make sure that they are securely positioned before they are in use. As laser cutters used in schools must be fully enclosed and have interlocked covers, so that they are certified at class one, there should be no need for any PPE, such as eye protection. Before using the laser, make sure that there is no debris from previous work under the laser bed. The bed will become dirty with residue from cutting. This will need periodic cleaning to minimize the risk of the residue igniting when using the machine. To clean the bed, it should be removed and washed with hot soapy water, then left to dry before being reused. Ventilation. Proper ventilation is essential when using a laser cutter. Ensure the extract system is correctly connected and functioning to exhaust any fumes or smoke generating during the cutting process. Never operate the laser in a confined or poorly ventilated space. All laser cutters must have effective extraction, either through a filtered system or through an extract to air system. Ideally, laser cutters should have both, with the exhaust taken out of the machine through a filtered cabinet and then exhausted to the outside where the fumes can be dispersed without the contaminated air re-entering a building or being a nuisance to people outside the room. You may need to get clarity about how your extraction unit works, as some schools have been informed by their local councils that extract to air is not allowed due to local clean air regulations. Material inspection. Before cutting or engraving, examine your material to ensure that it's compatible with the laser cutter. In particular, avoid using materials that contain chlorine, PVC or other materials that could create fumes that could damage the machine or the filter system. Setting up the laser cutter. Before turning on the power, make sure that the material is lying flat and in the correct orientation for the shape that you are going to cut or engrave. Turn on the power and carry out the pre-cut checks. Check that the extraction is working. On our machine, the extraction power is linked to the laser power, so it will come on automatically. The filter system also has an illuminated indicator to show that it is working as it should. Check that safety interlocks are functioning correctly and that all covers close properly. Check the focal length and make sure the lenses are clean. Uploading and preparing your design. Your machine will have its own driver software on which you can prepare the design and upload it to the laser cutter. Before sending it to the laser, double check the cutting and engraving settings. Ensure they match your material's thickness. If the design includes engraving or internal holes, it is best to carry out the internal cuts before cutting it from the body of the material. As once it is cut from the main body of the material, it can move either through the generation of heat or by being out of balance. You should avoid having cuts running too close to each other, as this can generate too much heat and cause warping of the materials and potentially cause fires. As a rule of thumb, cuts should be the same distance apart as the thickness of the material. Positioning the material. When your drawing has been uploaded into the laser cutter, 
you will need to check that the material is positioned correctly and that the cut will fit. On our machine, we have a test button that tells the laser head to move around the perimeter of the design. This is used to check that it will fit without fouling the end stops of the machine or run off the edges of the material. In most cases, the laser bed will support the materials. But if you're working with small pieces of material, you can use masking tape or other methods such as small weights or where the bed is magnetic, small magnets can be used to hold down small pieces so that they don't move during the cutting process. Safety checks. Before starting the laser, ensure the machine is closed and the extractor is running. Stand at a safe distance and never leave the laser cutter unattended while it is in operation. Starting the laser cutter. Now that everything is in place, you can start the cutting process. Press the start button and stay with the machine throughout the operation. Monitoring the process. While the laser cutter is in operation, keep an eye on the cutting progress and ensure there are no signs of excessive smoke, flames, or any unusual odors. Post-cutting safety. Once the cutting is complete, wait for the laser cutter to cool down and for any contaminated air to be extracted before opening the lid. The time this takes will depend upon the size of the machine and the power of the extraction unit, as well as the amount of cutting and engraving. Allow at least a couple of minutes. Carefully remove the finished pieces from the bed and remember that they may still be hot. Maintenance. There are a couple of things that you need to do between the uses of a laser cutter to ensure that it is left safe for use for the next occasion. Firstly, you should remove any debris from the laser bed after each use, but it's always worth checking before use that the last operator did clear up after themselves. You should also check the bed for wear and dirt residue before use, and where necessary, clean the bed materials. As I mentioned earlier, this can be done with hot soapy water, but there can be some very stubborn oils and glues that are left after cutting, so it may need some soaking. Every three uses, you should check and clean the mirrors. These are positioned to reflect the beam from the tube to the cutting nozzle. In our machine, there are three. To clean them, the best method is to use a cotton wool bud with isopropyl alcohol. You need a tiny amount, so you should be able to get this from your science department. Dip the tip into the alcohol and wipe it over the mirror. If the tip is discoloured, you should repeat the process until it comes back clean. Most laser cutters do not need any parts lubricating, but you should check with the manufacturer, as it may be good practice to inspect and, where needed, add suitable lubrication to bearings and spindles. As laser cutters are large machines, they do not tend to move around very much, but if they are still plugged into the power supply with a three pin plug, they will need a periodic portable appliance test. The outside of the machine should be cleaned and checked to ensure that all the locks and interlocks work as they should and there is no damage to the shell, as this is part of the safety system, blocking the potentially dangerous optical radiation from the laser, as well as containing any fumes. You will also have to carry out checks on the extraction inspecting and changing filters, inspecting pipework, and checking that all the joints are secure. Some machines will have separate water chillers or air pumps that will also need periodic checking. If your machine has a water chiller like ours, you'll need to replace the water every few months with new distilled water. We get ours from the science department. 
This will require the draining of the system and then refilling and checking for ear locks before using the laser. In conclusion, there are a couple of important points to bear in mind whenever you use a laser cutter. The main risks come from fumes and fires. These can be controlled through use of an effective extraction system and constant monitoring of the machine when in use. If, while cutting, you notice there are flames, you should pause the laser. If the flames do not immediately go out, turn off the machine. The extraction system should cause the flames to be extinguished. If this does not happen, you will need to extinguish the flames with a dry powder or CO2 extinguisher. If the flames get hold of the material, you should immediately evacuate the room and follow your school fire drill procedure. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions about the use of the laser cutter in school or any other piece of equipment, please contact Cleeps through the helpline. Thanks for watching.